I'm Jeff Richards and in this session I'm going to look at the right way to set up the advanced email manager and I'm going to cover how the advanced email manager works and how it processes emails within Sage CRM. I'm then going to go and have a look at the new rule, um, how you create new rule templates for uh, the advanced mail manager, how we can create those and what are the SDK resources available to implementers. And then I'm going to go and look at how we can configure the uh, advanced email manager to use different functions within the templates to allow processing of emails according to business requirements. OK, so let's get going. I'm going to switch over and so mostly drive this through slides. So that's OK. Advanced email management functionality is installed automatically with any CRM installation. The advanced email management service runs as a background process on the server. You'll find that this is a file called eware email manager.exe and it processes inbound emails according to predefined business rules. The advanced email management functionality requires the completion of some setup tasks by the system administrator to enable its use. The email manager functionality can also be made available whether you use CRM's embedded email editor or another email client to handle the outbound mail. It is also available for forwarding information from inbound mails into your CRM system. And this is described in the documentation. A typical arrangement for the mail manager works like this. A customer sends an email to an account that is monitored by the mail manager and this can either be a POP3 or MAPI account. The mail manager service picks up the message and processes it according to the rules held in a JavaScript file. This file is known as the template. The template is associated with the email account by settings defined in CRM. Have a look at the area, administration, email and documents, email management server options. This area also allows the system administrator to fine tune the way in which the message is processed. The code that is held in the template, and this could be one called support.js, can perform just about any data task within CRM. You can create and add any number of templates into the system. You have full access to any of the data handling objects within CRM and many of the process objects. You could, for example, have the inbound email be filed in CRM as a communication linked to a case. You could send an automatic email back to the customer, giving them the proof that their support issue has been received. That outbound email may have attachments, for example, an FAQ PDF. You could even ensure that when a customer sends another email quoting a reference number, then that email is correctly filed against the existing data. The API allows interaction with workflow and table level scripts. The list of API objects that can be used in the mail manager is shown on the screen now. And the documentation describes how you can set the mail manager up to test it with the existing default templates. There is only one mail manager service installed on a CRM server. You can find the installation directory underneath the hard drive installation. So that's C drive typically, program files, down underneath program files 86, Sage, CRM, services, and then look to the eware email manager.exe. And you can find the registry details found underneath the H key local machine system current control set services email manager. But really the mail manager picks up the information about which accounts to monitor and how to monitor them from the registry settings of the CRM installs themselves. Now in a development environment you may have multiple installs of CRM. But on a production environment, you should only have one install of CRM. And the install of the mail manager can easily get confused as to which instance of CRM within a development environment it is supposed to be serving. So to ensure that your mail manager is interacting with the correct CRM instance, then you'll need to go to the CRM registry entries 
and blank or set to null the EM login and EM password entries except for the install of CRM you wish to use with the mail manager. You can find that under HKEY Local Machine Software Eware Config CRM. Now you also may find that the mail manager can run into problems with certain antivirus programs. So you will need to register the eware emailmanager.exe with your antivirus and your security software as being allowed to carry out email tasks. You may also need to consider changing the ports that it works with if port 25 SMTP is blocked by your software. So consider looking at how your email server and CRM can change ports to work with both POP3 and which is port uh, 111 or port 26 for SMTP. Now just to remind you, the mail manager processes emails that come into monitored accounts. Each monitored account is associated with a script template. The association is done within the administration screens. And you can see this within administration, email and documents, email management server options. And you need to look for the field, the template field. Now the scripts that are shown available in the template field are automatically drawn from a folder on the server. And you can find this underneath uh, C, uh, underneath the C drive, assuming that you've installed uh, on your server, underneath C drive program files, x86, Sage, CRM services, custom pages, scripts. Now these script files are written in JavaScript. There are several, several resources available for you to use when working with the advanced email manager scripts. And uh, we have uh, several of these contained within the SDK, and that's the SDK installer. And here you can see the snippets available within the Visual Studio. The specialist email manager code snippets can be combined with standard JavaScript snippets uh, that can also be used with the either the classic ASP pages or within the internal scripting like uh, the validate and table level scripts. So you can use this with the other libraries uh, of snippets with inside CRM. So CRM adds several script files as examples when it's installed and these provide very good patterns for a script that you may wish to create. An easy way of experimenting with the script files is to create a copy of a template like support.js. But the SDK resources do allow you to start assembling your own table and um, template script very easily. Script files have a common structure. You would start off with comments, the initialization of the variables, general event functions. You would have then a before main action and after main action as well as then the main actions themselves. Uh, these are the actions and functions which are configured within the uh, configuration screen. Now, watch out. The main action is actually a reserved word. Do not call any function main action, as this is internally replaced with a function called from the configuration screen. And then you can have any number of utility functions as well within inside the system. The JavaScript of these templates is processed by the eware email manager.exe that runs as a service and it's processed externally from the main eware DLL and uses CRM's registered com objects with uh, the particular objects that are available to it. So there are some specific API objects which are available only to the email manager. The comments area is an important reminder that certain objects are automatically passed into the scripting environment as the template loads and is processed. These objects are the user query, the person query, the company query, uh, the eware object itself, uh, the message handler, and the email object. An email being processed will have come from someone, and that someone may be in the system and needs to be identified by the sender's email address. The first three objects are query objects that are passed into the process that have carried out searches using SQL. So you can see that there is a user query, a person query, and a company query. 
and you'll note that leads are not automatically scanned by the mail manager, but the fourth object passed into the template scope is the eWare object itself. And you can therefore use that for any other data searches that you might want to carry out. The eWare object is more normally referenced as the CRM object and provides access to the general API objects. The eWare or CRM object could then be used to search for the email object in the lead table or if it was associated with a custom entity that may have been added into the system, for example, project. Through the use of the query object, it could also check the email address in external systems such as an uh, Sage BMS uh, or ERP database. All COM API actions have to be done as a CRM user, and this is part of system security. The eWare or CRM object will have used the credentials provided in the administration screen. Uh, this will typically be a user with administration rights, as you can see on this screen. The message handler allows for debugging control and the email object represents the interface to the email and provides ways of accessing the recipients list and all and any attachments. The same object can be used by the template script to both process inbound email but also to formulate an outbound email response. Note. The email object is not available for either internal scripts like the table scripts or ASP pages. There are some other objects passed to the script. In the administration screen, uh, the administrator can, com uh, can configure the default rule set assigned user and the default rule set assigned team and also the default rule set action. And you can see within the log files and the log files for the eWare email manager.exe server service can be found here within the, within the C drive program files x86 sage CRM services logs and this will show how the additional objects are passed. Other sage CRM advanced email manager can be configured to use different functions within templates to allow processing of emails according to specific business requirements. Where alternative functions are specified, then you'll actually find that there are additional objects passed within inside the script and within the log files. This will look like this. The comment section of a template therefore acts as a good reminder of the objects that are passed to the process. The template script also needs to declare global variables that will facilitate the passing of data between the different functions within the template. In the examples above, we can see that a function called sales inquiry was called. And now this is an example of a main action function. The main action function defines the key behavior invoked by the template. Typically, this will further reference helper functions that do standardized tasks, such as filing an email or providing an auto response. The email object is automatically passed to the template script and is globally available to all functions it has properties and methods to allow the inbound email to be passed. These properties include the body, um, that's a string, it is HTML, whether, that, whether you can uh, work with the email as an HTML object. Uh, you've also got the subject priority, recipient, sender's name, sender's address, uh, and the delivery name and, and attachments. But we've also got the methods for the email object, like send, add file, clear, and the ability to create a named header. But here you can see that uh, we've got within the object the address list and uh, how we can start to reference properties like the items and the count and the individual addresses within inside the address list. We saw that template script files have a common structure. You can have comments, you can have the initialization of variables, the general event functions uh, with the idea of the before main action and after main action the main functions of themselves, and then any utility functions that you also need. The main functions area would be there for you to define the key behavior, the, the main, main action, to be invoked by the template. And it's possible for a template to contain several main function or main actions that are associated with inbound email and are invoked according to different defined conditions. And so if you have a look at the screen, administration, email and documents and email management server options and have a look at some of the options for a particular address, you can see that you can associate the default rule set action with different 
behavior. Now the option here is to map the functions defined in the template. To allow a new function to be called from within the template, you need to be able to add a translation. And so that can be done underneath administration, customization translations. And you'll need to look for the caption family, JS functions. For example, if your template script used a function called sales inquiry, then you would need to add the following data into the custom caption screens. Caption family is JS functions. The caption code is sales inquiry. And watch out for the fact that I've written sales inquiry with the brackets and the semicolon. The US translation or other translation for sales inquiry. Now, do note that function includes the semicolon. Then you can add other translations as required. The new function would then be available in the administration screens, where you only have a single function referenced in the configuration screen for the managed email account. This will result in a simple set of information being passed to the template file when it's processed. The logs will show how the main action is invoked. And these would include the additional objects. Uh, these would now show the additional objects now being passed. It is, however, possible to add other rule sets that can conditionally be applied when the email is processed, and these additional rules would invoke alternative main functions. Have a look at the administration, email and document screen, email server options, and have a look at how you can add a rule set to be able to change the behavior. These additional rules look for different conditions within the returned objects. The mail manager carries out searches on the person, company and user tables that check the inbound email addresses to see if it's already known in the system. The query objects are passed to the scripts, but these objects are also available uh, to check uh, by the rule sets themselves. And so if you can see here, we can create a condition, we can create a communication based on a certain condition. So this is calling the particular action. Now in the example above, the inbound email is checked to see whether the company associated with the email address is of the type reseller. If it is, then the action creates a communication that is executed instead of the main action. That's the default main action. The script functions that are invoked by passing the template are different. So you can see here, the structure would contain this. <laughs> so um, that uh, was about um, our uh, advanced mail manager.